XRP won a battle in its nine-month war with the Securities and Exchange Commission, which says XRP is not a is a security, rather not a cryptocurrency, and hence must be registered and regulated as such. Ripple had filed a motion demanding the SEC reveal its internal policy detailing the Commission's rules on SEC employees trading and holding cryptocurrency. Ripple's thinking being if it could prove SEC employees have way in the past traded XRP, Bitcoin, and Ether, then the crypto company could argue the SEC had given Ripple clearance to operate XRP as a currency. While the judge in the case denied Ripple's motion, she did order the SEC to produce documents. Clearly, Ripple is not backing down from the fight, but with billions at stake and precedents that could be set for the entire cryptocurrency industry, we bring in Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and Charlie Gasparino, who's been all over the SEC's case against Ripple XRP. And Charlie, we've got the backdrop of China's yep. most forceful wording to date, banning <laughs> cryptocurrency. But let's start with you and what you've been breaking yeah, regarding and, Brad and, and Ripple. Yeah, and I want to start off questioning the Brad, but I want to make one point here. We've reached out to the following people. Jay Clayton, uh, the former SEC chief who brought the case against you guys. It was his last act in office as SEC chief under uh, President Trump. Bill Hinman, the former head of corporate finance, who presumably was part of that decision since Mr. Hinman headed a lot of the, uh, the regulatory stuff involving crypto. Uh, we've reached out to the people who run Ethereum because they play a role in this too. We've reached out to the SEC's press office, to get in touch with Gary Gensler because he's continuing the case that, that Clayton brought. So I, I guess I, this is where it comes down to for me, Brad. Ripple was charged by the SEC to fail, for failure to do disclosures after, if you look at it pretty objectively, I, I looked at it objectively, doing much the same thing that Ethereum did, but Ethereum and its Ether cryptocurrency has gotten a complete pass. Uh, Bill Hinman gave him a pass in his speech, that famous 2018 speech. Obviously, uh, Jay Clayton has given him a pass because he didn't bring charges. So far, Gary Gensler hasn't looked backwards and said, hey, was that a security when you were using to uh, uh, you were using Ether to build out uh, the Ethereum uh, blockchain? And you guys are being dinged because you presumably are using XRP to continue to build out. Why do you think there is this this, this these these two standards? Just from your standpoint. Look, I'll start, Charlie. Thank you for having me, Liz. Thank you for having me. I, I think there has been and continues to be a lack of clarity. I think the points you're making about the the statements the SEC has made about ether certainly is one example of that. But look, I think as you have reported, Charlie, that if we want this industry to thrive here in the United States, there needs to be clarity. And I don't think we can just continue to say, hey, there is clarity, as we've heard from SEC officials, uh, even more recently under uh, Chair Gary Gensler's uh, leadership. And you know, we can't both say we need, there is clarity, and also ask Congress to write new laws to make it clear. Like both those things can't exist. So I think there's one good example of where they have said, and even a little bit backtracked under Gensler's administration as to whether or not Ether is or is not a security. But there's a lot of lack of clarity. I have you know, been out there publicly with, with even Liz years ago mm -hmm. speaking about the need for this clarity for, the, for this industry to thrive here in the U.S. Do you think there is a conflict of interest between what Jay, Jay Clayton does now in private practice? Um, I, I must admit, I know Jay, I think he's an honest guy, but he clearly, he does represent, he does work for companies that do stuff involving crypto, not with your crypto, with Ether and Bitcoin. Do you think that's a, a, the conflict of interest that's going on here, that there's some, that they've picked winners and losers for business reasons? A lot of people who own XRP believe that. I'm not saying I do, but yeah. it, that's been out there. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, it, Charlie, your reporting, I think, is on point here. And I, I think the timing, you know, the, the fact that the, right on the last day of Chairman Clayton's uh, kind of really final act, as you indicated, brought this lawsuit. I, I, I get this question a lot. I don't know what people's intent are. And so I, I've tried to stay out of that. Suffice it to say, I think the timing stinks. I think it's not a good look. Uh, you know, I think we have to go back to what was what is the mission of the SEC? The mission is to protect investors and help ensure orderly markets. You know, in this case, you have actually a you know more than ten thousand people who are holding XRP have filed a class action right. against oh, the yes. SEC. Oh yes, I've read it. These are the exact people the SEC is supposed to be protecting, and they're saying, "Hey, you did the opposite. So you didn't provide clarity. 
you actually allowed XRP to be listed and traded very freely across the United States. More and more people got involved. It's traded for eight years. And then you brought a suit driving the price down 60 or 70%. You know, if, if the goal is orderly markets and the goal is to protect investors, it, you know, I think we've lost picture of the big, lost sight of the big picture of why, what the SEC's right. mandate well, is. Now, now, Gensler, Gary Gensler, the, the current SEC chief, is kind of carrying Jay's water here a little bit. He's, he's continuing the case. Some would say that he's even more uh, uh, sort of... He's actually doing more regulation by enforcement than, than Jay Clayton. What do you think his end game yeah. is, Gensler's end game is, with you guys and the entire crypto business? You know, obviously, I've read the same information you have about, you know, what Coinbase has publicly stated about the SEC's posture towards them. You know, I think we lose sight of the fact that crypto is regulated. It's regulated by the CFTC. It's regulated by, you know, other government Good entities, point. whether it's FinCEN. Uh, in the U.S. Treasury. And so when I've heard the SEC people come forward and say, hey, this is the wild, wild west, it's not regulated. It's like, well, that, that's not entirely true. I think you, may, you, the SEC, may want more power over this. And your previous, you know, previously said Bitcoin's not a security, ETH's not a security, and they remain silent. There seems to be kind of backtracking there and said, hey, come talk to us. Yet, Every time someone goes to talk to them from the crypto community, it feels like it's just a, it's lead generation to bring enforcement actions. That's not a good way for us to help this industry thrive in the United States, as you've reported, Charlie. Thank you. Brad, if I were on Gary Gensler and Jay Clayton's side of this, which I'm not, I'm just playing devil's advocate. XRP, of course, is the native asset of the XRP blockchain. And it was pre-mined, meaning, you know, with Bitcoin, everybody knows there were an original- I can hear your voice, yes original 21 million uh, for Bitcoin. But with XRP, it was pre-mined. And their point would really be that they would trade that almost as an asset. You would. And uh, I mean, it doesn't sound like an actual currency. And maybe that's what they're going for. Where do you get sort of the, the ability to stand up and say, no, that is not an asset. That is a currency. Brad, can you hear us? One second. Charlie, I think, can you? Brad, can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I, you know, Liz, Liz's question, I guess, or Mike, something's, we're having technical difficulties, but what she basically said is, what is the basis that you are not, um, uh, that you are a currency and not a security? I mean, why, what, what is, how do you, how do you define yourself? Brad? I do believe we're going to try and reestablish uh, the audio with Brad at the moment, but we're going to take a quick break. We're going to figure it out. We'll get the connections going once again, and we'll be back with Brad Garlinghouse in just a second. Dow's up 65 points. Charlie and I coming right back. Okay, Charlie and my Twitter feed has just gone crazy. We have Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse back along with Charlie, but stocks are also hitting session highs. Dow is up 82 points. You saw the rest. Okay, Brad, well, wait Charlie a second. and I are wait, wait back. A second. I just got breaking news that Gary Gensler and Jay Clayton were in the control room and they cut Brad's mic. Stop. This is breaking news here exclusively at Fox. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Okay, Brad, what <laughs> I was asking you before... What I was asking you before to play devil's advocate is simply what you've heard before, too. But I, I need to restate it. Ripple is a little bit different. You've got XRP as the native token or coin or asset, whatever, native asset of the XRP ledger. And you created about 100 billion tokens in advance that were pre-mined and periodically you release them. At least you own a chunk of that. And periodically you release it. It's almost like you control of very much the price, because if you start flooding the market on any given day with more XRP, the price might go down. That feels like an asset versus a currency. And we know that Ether was allowed to do something very similar, but what do ICO. you have to really fight through that argument on behalf of the SEC? Well, there's a whole bunch of things I want to clarify there. I mean, the first and I think maybe most important is that the, the, the decentralized open source technology we call the XRP ledger pre-existed the creation of Ripple, the company. Mm -hmm. So Ripple, the company, never did an ICO. 
uh, an ICO referring to initial coin offering. Mm -hmm. And again, one of the things that we were discussing earlier that Charlie called out, Ether did very publicly yeah. do an ICO, initial coin offering, which many people would call a securities offering. That is not what Ripple, the company, has done. There's different ways that these technologies work. You know, one is proof of stake, and that's uh, where the Ethereum community is moving. You have proof of work. That's how the Bitcoin blockchain works through mining, which it consumes a massive amount of energy. The earliest engineers who created XRP were trying to build a better cryptocurrency, a faster, more scalable, more efficient, and less costly, and certainly massively more efficient from an energy point of view. And I think Ripple has certainly just sought to further the agenda of that XRP community. Owning a lot of XRP and saying that's a security is kind of like saying that oil is a security of Exxon yeah. or gold is a security of the largest gold mining companies. It just doesn't really make sense. Well, let me let me ask Brad a dumb reporter, non crypto expert question, which is me. Um, <laughs> why don't you just just give all the disclosure to the SEC like they wanted? Like, just I mean, could could that have solved the the, the, the puzzle? Or the problem, I, well, I Charlie, guess. Look, as you know, Ripple is an extremely transparent company, particularly relative to the crypto industry. If you start treating XRP as a security, however, that means you're subject to a whole lot of regulations, costs right. associated with a security settlement. If you're using, again, the, the, the magic of what is XRP is how incredibly fast and how incredibly cost efficient it is for these cross-border payments, how Ripple deploys the technology. If you start treating it as a security, the costs and speed change dramatically. Okay. And really, that's an example where the SEC is, in effect, picking the winners and losers of this new industry. And that's not the role of the government in this case. Yeah. Um, are you ever going to settle with them? Because I know people like you, I've covered this a million times. Yeah, we're going to get them. We're going to get them. We're going to win, win, win. And then all of a sudden, they'll say, ah, let's just settle. Mm -hmm. You know, is that going to happen with you guys? Look, I think that to the extent we can find a constructive path forward with the SEC, we of course want to find that. There's no scenario though that we're gonna settle unless there's absolute certainty about what is XRP on a go forward basis. And it's very clear in how Ripple is using these technologies, how many, many scores of other people in the XRP community are using these technologies. They're not securities. They don't represent an ownership in Ripple, the company. Okay, Brad, uh, there are people who say, don't take on the government. That this is a Coinbase issue right now where Coinbase came out and initially really came out swinging against the SEC saying, why are you guys trying to tamp down on our lending, uh, you know, uh, idea where we, you know, yeah, we pay a little bit of interest on this and now they put it off, they back down. Will you back down? And I know it's, it's different from the question Charlie just asked, but is it really smart and what is your in-house counsel telling you? Well, I'm gonna keep the, uh, attorney client privilege intact and he'll be happy to, that I'm, I'm not coming on that specifically. But look, you know, we have a clear vision of how XRP can be an incredibly powerful tool, not just for how Ripple is using it for mm -hmm. cross-border payments, but how it can be used across other industries. And there's a lot of other people in the crypto community, in the XRP community doing amazing things with XRP. So my view is, look, we're gonna keep pointing these things out. We're gonna educate the market. We're gonna educate the judge involved here. And, it, you know, I, I think as we have discussed here, I, I don't think the role of the SEC, SEC should be to pick winners and losers. And there's a lot of conflicts that I think we as an industry deserve and need the clarity so that the U.S. can thrive in this industry, just as we did in the Internet of Information 20 years ago. Good point. Excellent point to end on. Brad, come back. We're following the story. Charlie's all over it. We've been all over it. Brad Garlinghouse of Ripple XRP. We are coming right back. Dow is up 79 points. I'm alone.